Edwards, he started back in the 28th position. It's almost like Carl Edwards and Jeff Burton, they've been marching through the field together. Now watch Burton. He's up high. He gets a nice run off that corner. But here comes the 12 right back underneath of him and hold, he can't, he can't complete the pass. Meanwhile, Jeff Green, the 66 underneath Carl Edwards in the 99. And right with him, Kyle Busch, and back in the 01, Mark Martin. For more on Ryan Newman, here's Steve. Like Ryan Newman said just moments ago, I've been turning okay in the center, but the cars around me are rolling the center better than I am. Thanks. Uh, Scott Riggs has gone to the garage as a result of that crash. And that's a, that's a two-fold part. part of that, if you got to use a lot of brake to get the car to slow down, you ride the brake to the middle of the corner, the car won't turn until you get your foot off the brake. So you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. i got to use the brakes to slow down, but the brakes are keeping me from turning. Another good run for Jeff Green. He completes the pass on Edwards and moves his... Best Buy Chevy up into 13th place. As much brake as I, I, these guys are using, I can tell it's kind of like driving on ice or snow. You know when you lock up your front tires and the car just keeps wanting to turn and all of a sudden you lock off the brake and wham, it turns. That's kind of the way a race car is. I got a feeling this is a guy, Matt Yoko talked about him earlier. Kevin Harvick, we're riding with him now in this 29 car. Remember, won both races here last year, but he doesn't have that car. We didn't race the car tomorrow last year, but he's sitting right there in fourth position, right behind Kurt Busch in that two. Mark Martin makes his move and puts the Army car out ahead of Carl Edwards. You know, Mark has raced the Army car five times this year, and four of those five times, his pit crew, led by Ryan Pemberton, have won the Checkers Rally's double drive through challenge for spending the least amount of time on pit road. That's an incredible job by those guys to win that four out of five races they're big no question man i think they've always had a great pit crew but because the car's performing now they're getting the notice that they've always deserved larry mack is the total package you know from being a crew chief in dw from being a driver it takes every part of the pod to have a successful operation and mark has that now what he doesn't have though is side by he says the car is just pushing through the middle of the corner and then this other issue it's just too free on exit the guy who has the most top fives here at Phoenix Martin right now is just holding his own back in 15. And Daryl's side bite is when they go off in the corner and you get right there at the apex of the corner and the car rolls over and bites into the racetrack. That's what those little wings right there, those outside pieces, that's what they create is side force and they're very, very effective. Jamie McMurray to pit road and this is very unexpected. What is that overflow of water? Well, it, I don't know. It looks like it's getting hot, and that's yeah. another thing. We don't, it, that's got plastic on the grill. He's picked up a piece of trash. You can see it right there. And he is overheating. Boy, he is, and that's not good. But that's another. That tape off the top. Tape off the top, guys. Another unknown about this car go tomorrow ahead, go ahead, go ahead. is they're still learning about the cooling on the front end. Two big differences between the car we have been racing. One is that front splitter area that we just saw, which provides much less aerodynamic downforce on the nose. And the other is that big wing Darrell was talking about on the back of the car instead of the blade type spoiler uh, that the previous cars had. Dick Bergman. Uh, Jamie McMurray started in the second position tonight, Mike, and had great, great hopes for a good finish. But first, they had problems with the pit stop, and this is the plastic that was on that grill. This is one of those windshield tear-offs, and it about closed the grill off. So McMurray now, instead of a chance to win, he's got a chance to see if he can pass a lot of cars. But, Dick, I think what they have to do is, is make sure Jamie's aware we're only 58 laps into this race. He went one lap down. They've got a good race car. They just need to get themselves in position to get that free pass a little later on in the race, and they should be fine. The cooling systems on these cars today are pressurized, and so it's a little bit different than a system than what you have on your car at home. And they can get hot and lose a little water and, uh, and recover. So uh, he should be okay if he didn't run it that way too long, and I don't believe he did. So that car should be able to cool back down. Denny Hamlin is our leader. If you'd like to know, say, how many miles per gallon these cars get or what crew's having the best day in the pits, you can ask our answer man. Tom Jensen is on duty throughout the race. Go to msn.foxsports.com, keyword answer with your questions. 
60 laps complete in the Subway Fresh Fit 500 on Fox. Saguaro were harmed in the shooting of that video as Denny Hamlin holds court here in Phoenix he's been out in front twice for a total of 38 laps that's the most anybody's led today as he pulls up on Casey Mears upper right is Johnny Sauter in the 70 who started 42nd he's the biggest mover of the race he's into the top 20 as you watch the battle for fifth rage on the upper left of your screen here's Kristen Let's start with Kurt Busch. He's lost a couple of positions. We know this is the track of two different turns, and Kurt is struggling running the bottom in the different turns. Turns three and four earlier in the run. He gets tight. One and two later in the run. Of course, we're a little bit later now, so he's a little tighter in one and two. Meanwhile, Johnny Sauter all the way up to 20th. That is huge for this team. Remember, they have that much sought-after 35th position in points. Johnny Sauter's having a little bit of trouble seeing the fluid that Jamie McMurray laid down on the track. Of course, what Chris was talking about, the top 35 and owner points going to each race each week, they're locked into the show. But we talked about Johnny's teammate, Jeff Green in the 66. Here's Johnny Sauter in the 70, both in the top 20. Not surprised, because they pretty much have a huge affiliation with Hendrick Motorsports. Obviously, Hendrick Motorsports, they've done their homework with this car tomorrow, and I think it's bled over to these Haas teams. Yeah, I think about uh, Bristol, the first time we run these cars, Jeff Green finished sixth, so they've got a pretty good package. Jeff Gordon has been no worse than third in this race. As you heard at the top of the show, this is one of only three current Nextel Cup tracks on which he has not scored a cup victory. Right now, Gordon is 1.1 seconds behind Denny Hamlin. Steve? You know, Mike, in a lot of racetracks we go to, we hear the drivers say, I need more forward fight. But Denny Hamlin just said, hey, I could stand to give up some forward fight. I'm starting to get a little bit tight on the exit of the corners. And what you normally fight here is when you put the throttle down, you spin the rear tires. But it sounds like right now, when he puts the throttle down, the rear tires are biting almost too good, and it's shoving the front end. Hamlin, the leader by one second. There's the 24 of Gordon. And Kevin Harvick is third, kind of holding pace with Gordon. Matt, he's 1.8 seconds out of the lead. And Kevin Harvick will tell you, a driver's racing shoes are a lot like a baseball player's glove. When you find one, it just has that special feel. You know, in fact, Harvick's racing shoes, his manufacturer doesn't even make them anymore. They make them special for Harvick. But what happened the RCR campus teammate, Jeff Burton, he was a little ill this week. Not from being sick, but from frustration. Apparently, his race-winning shoes from Texas turned up missing. So Burton had to use another pair this weekend, and he was a little upset about it. Well, it turns out, the guy you're looking at right now, Kevin Harvick, snuck and took Burton's shoes and basically held them hostage this weekend. In fact, this morning, they were taking pictures with him to kind of use that as ammunition to even get more of uh, Burton's goat. Matt Kenton tried him on, took pictures of him, Harvick, and a few others, and then right before race time, they took him over to Burton. But Burton had a good idea who had him. If the shoe fits, wear it, right? Fifth and sixth place there, Martin Truex and Kurt Busch. We ride with Jeff Burton. He's in 14th place. Well, will Casey Kane season turn around? A little more than half of you say yes. Remember last year, Casey Kane's number nine won more races than anybody on this circuit. Right now, he's uh, hovering back in 23rd position and actually fell back a little bit after that last restart. So they're going to have to do some uh, real work on that car to get it up there if he's going to turn it around tonight. Yeah, Daryl, he's about a straightaway from being lapped by our leader, Denny Hamlin, right now. Denny Hamlin is trying to FedEx himself away from this field. He now leads Jeff Gordon by 1.6 seconds, but a lot of racing left to go. Baseball on 
Fox. Next Saturday, Red Sox and Yankees renew their rivalry in high definition to the Cubs and the Cardinals face off. It's Fox Saturday Baseball, the game of the week, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Robin Young, the former major leaguer, giving the command for today's race here in Phoenix. Next Sunday, we'll be in Talladega. But right now, Denny Hamill, the native of Virginia, out in front, leading and has led the most laps. Kevin Harvick has moved into second behind Jeff Gordon. Now, earlier in the race, Jimmy Johnson, he's dominated this season with three wins, but having battery problems. Started fourth. Johnson now has fallen back, moved back up to fourth. Rookie David Reagan having some problems for the second straight week, involved in an early wreck here, a little brush with Tony Stewart. David Stremley, Casey Mears, Scott Riggs, all involved, bringing out a caution. Jamie McMurray, Jeff Hammond, started on the front row, but developed problems. Yeah, and this is one of the things we were kind of wondering about as far as the COT car is concerned. He got a windshield tear off on the front nose, couldn't get it to come loose, car overheated, had to make an unscheduled stop. He now finds himself one lap down with a lot of racing to go. But the guy that I'm really watching right now has got to be Kevin Harvick. He dominated here last year at Phoenix, guys, and he's really starting to put some pressure on our leader, Denny Hamlin. Harvick won both races here last year, but as we watched Denny Hamlin from Ward Burton's car, Darrell, getting through traffic here for the race leader seems to be especially difficult. Well, and we heard a little report there that he might be having some brake issue. You're going to use a whole lot more brake trying to get through traffic. I just saw some smoke come out of his car, actually. Um, you're going to use more brake as you work that traffic, and that, be, that could be causing some problems. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, third and fourth, and separated by a car length as they try to lap the 38 of David Gilliland. 